I built a web app to translate YouTube videos into blog posts. The crazy thing is, before building this, I had absolutely no web development experience. Yet, I was still able to build and deploy this project in just four days. So, how did I do that? In this video, I'm going to share my full process for building this app and all the tools I used to go from idea to deployment. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Shaw. I make videos about data science and entrepreneurship. And if you enjoy this content, please consider clicking the subscribe button. That's a great no cost way you can support me and all the videos that I make. For a bit of context, my background is in data science, which is basically all about using data and machine learning to solve problems. While this means I've done a lot of programming, coding to process data or train models is very different than building consumer software. This is a common struggle for most data scientists who might be very comfortable with Python but never learn how to ship SaaS products. With my savings on track to hit zero dollars this quarter, I was determined not to be one of these data scientists. After spending too much time on Indie Hacker Twitter, I figured the best way to learn this skill set was by doing it. That's why this quarter, my goal is to ship one product every single month until something makes money. My first such product is a tool for converting YouTube videos into blog posts. It took me just four days to build and deploy the initial prototype for this app, and here I'm going to share exactly how I did it. The first day, I was starting from scratch. I had had my goal of shipping a product in less than a month, but hadn't settled on an idea. My approach to picking product ideas came from advice I got from Stephen Wolfram, who said, The product I'm building is a product that I want. My interpretation of this advice is to solve your own problems. This led me to three product ideas. A YouTube thumbnail generator, a YouTube clip finder, and a YouTube video to blog converter. After doing some basic research and playing around with ChatGPT, I settled on this last idea because I felt it was the one I could implement the fastest. I had also seen a job post on Upwork paying a few hundred dollars to do exactly this. With an idea settled, my next step wasn't to start coding. Instead, I started designing the website and user interface. For me, starting with the design was actually a necessity because I had no idea how to code the thing. My approach to doing the design was to first create a brand blueprint. In other words, creating a color palette, picking fonts, and designing a logo for the product. For the color palette, I used a website called Coolers to quickly find colors I liked, then brought everything together in Canva. Having this brand blueprint made it pretty easy to design a simple UI. At the end of day one, I had something that looked like this. On day two, the goal was to implement the front end based on my Canva design. Since my goal was to ship the product by the end of the month, I didn't have time to learn HTML and a front end framework. The fastest way forward would be to use the language I'm most comfortable with, Python. Lucky for me, a few months ago, a Python library was released to do exactly this. The library is called Fast HTML, which allows developers to build modern web apps in Python. I spent the morning learning Fast HTML by watching a lecture from the creators and reading through their documentation. Then in the afternoon, I started coding the front end based on my Canva design. My first step was to take a screenshot of the design and paste it into cursor to get me started. Even though Fast HTML is a new library that Claude and GPT haven't been trained on, I uploaded this text file from Fast HTML's GitHub repository to give Cursor more context, which actually worked surprisingly well. This experience sold me on using Cursor and AI assistants for coding. I'd also use ChatGPT from time to time for tasks such as writing CSS stylings. This workflow of trying 
trying AI chat in cursor with Claude first, then going to ChatGPT if needed became my standard approach. By the end of the day, I had a site that looked very similar to my initial design. By day three, I had coded my website, but it didn't do anything. The next step was to implement the back end. I started by asking ChatGPT to write me a prompt for creating blog posts based on YouTube video transcripts. I tinkered with this prompt in ChatGPT a bit and experimented manually with different videos. When I had something that looked good, I implemented the whole process in Python. The two key libraries I used here were the YouTube Transcript API and OpenAI's Python API. Since I've used these libraries for past projects, I was able to repurpose most of the code from these examples. That was the extent of the AI I used for this initial version. I could have done something more sophisticated, like allowing users to upload PDFs or fine tuning a model on my own YouTube videos and blog posts, but that would have taken time I don't have right now. If this product is something that people actually want, then I'll go back and make these improvements. The rest of the backend implementation was just making the website work via basic web development, which I was all learning on the fly. By day four, I had a working prototype of the app running locally on my machine, but you can't really sell a product that only runs on your computer. The goal of day four was to deploy my app to the internet. To avoid abuse from spammers and bots, I set up Google OAuth. This is basically that sign in with Google option that you see on websites these days. The benefits of requiring people to sign in with Google are one, I don't have to manage sensitive information like user passwords, and two, I don't need to worry about verifying that the users are human. While setting up OAuth sounds simple enough, it took me most of the morning to get this working. After that, I bought a custom domain for the app. I paid $70 for the domain y2b.io from Squarespace. And then finally, I deployed the app on Railway. This was the fastest option because there was example code for deploying a fast HTML app to Railway in their documentation. After a handful of failed deployments and switching my domain provider to Cloudflare, I was finally up and running. Here's a demo of me using that early version of the app. I used it to create a blog post for a podcast that I hosted last year. Typically, it takes me at least an hour to write a first draft for a blog like this. However, using this tool, I was able to do that in just five minutes. And then after just one day of this blog being monetized on Medium, I've made $12 from it, which is already some real value for me personally. In just four days, I went from idea to production. This is the world now. Thanks to Python libraries like fast HTML, coding tools like Cursor, and deployment services like Railway, developers can implement ideas faster and validate them in public. While this project would have taken me weeks without these tools, it was still a prototype. So it had limitations such as OAuth users had to be manually defined in the Google Cloud Console. There wasn't a database hooked up to the app so users could use it without any limits. And most importantly, there was no Stripe integration, so no way of making any money from it. It took me another eight days to make an MVP version for which any Google user could sign in. Usage metrics were stored in a SQLite database. Stripe integration was set up. And and created a landing page that included a demo for people who hadn't signed up yet. You can try out the latest version of the app completely for free using the link in the description below. Although shipping an app in one month may have sounded crazy a few years ago, this is becoming normal. Based on my experience with this first product, here are three key tips for those trying to do something similar. First, build with what you know. If I had to learn JavaScript or React before even starting this project, I'd still probably be watching YouTube tutorials. Second, use AI tools. Coding assistants like Cursor and ChatGPT have become the norm in programming. If you aren't using them, you're probably moving two times slower than you would otherwise. Third and finally, it's not just about building. I know this video focused on the development side of the product, but what are just as important, if not more, are the idea that you build and how you you market it. For ideas, I'd take Wolfram's advice and solve your own problems. This allows you to move faster and increase
increases the likelihood of validation because you are your own customer. For marketing, that's still something I'm trying to figure out. But when I find something that works, I'll be sure to share it here. If you have any questions about my process or any of the tech I used, please let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for your time and thanks for watching.